One thing that every SCP reader learns soon enough is that there is no canon. Things constantly contradict each other, and it's all one big confusing mess. This is because there are thousands of writers with millions of visions for the universe. To try and fit it all within a cohesive narrative would be to stifle their creativity. SCP acts, for the most part, as an anthology of isolated stories, concepts, and characters that are hastily cobbled together by the readers to form a larger narrative. However, while some of these have gotten popular enough to be referenced by other works in order to create a larger cohesive narrative, any contradictions that are present depend on the readers to sort them out and choose what they believe. However, what if you wanted stories with a little more consistency? Well, why don't you check out some canons? You might say, what is a canon? I thought there was no canon. Well, there is no central canon, but there are canons, which are a series of self-contained stories that revolve around a single theme, setting, or concept. Canons are written by multiple authors and open for contribution, but they are typically internally consistent, which means that while canons can contradict other aspects of the universe, they don't usually contradict themselves. So in this video, I'll summarize every single SCP canon for your enjoyment. I sorted the available canons on the SCP wiki into two distinct categories, the ones that attempt to coexist with the mainline narrative. The mainline narrative is that the SCP Foundation is a secretive paranormal organization that secures, contains, and protects, and the ones that do not, which are typically alternate universes and divergent timelines. We'll begin with the ones that attempt to coexist with the mainline narrative. So without further ado, let's get started. GOI Hubs The main way in which we interact with groups of interest in the SCP universe is through the SCP items that the Foundation contains that are connected to said group. However, what if you wanted stories about these groups where the Foundation isn't present, from the perspectives of the people actually in them? These are available to read on their respective hubs in either the form of tales, which are stories written in prose rather than an SCP report, or another format altogether. For example, Marshall, Carter, and Dark features auction item info pages, Ambrose Restaurants features menus, etc. If you want to learn more about GOIs, check out my GOI video. Shameless plug. The Global Occult Coalition Case Files The GOC Case Files is a series of files about the GOC, everyone's favorite furniture destroyers. This series helps provide more insight into the goals, internal workings, technology, history, and other missions of the group, beyond the chair chippers they're known as. They are, after all, the largest paranormal organization apart from the Foundation itself, and we won't get the full story from the Foundation's perspective. Et Tom Deum Pativi. Et Tom Deum Pativi is a canon about the Horizon Initiative, a GOI that consists of all three major Abrahamic faiths, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. It explores the inner workings and conflicts of the organization, as well as the agents, two of which are Mary Ann and Salah, who are an interfaith couple that serve as the viewpoint for the readers. The Cool War II is a subcanon. Oh geez, there are those now? which is part of a larger series of stories called Acidverse. The Acidverse is a tale series written by a random mini, and therefore not a canon because it is not open for contribution. The Acidverse has a subseries called The Cool War, about the GOI Are We Cool Yet, and how a man named Ruiz Duchamp is trying to shake it up with art exhibits such as Wowie, Go Kill Yourself. The Cool War 2, its spin-off, is open for contribution, however, how this canon works is that Random Mini made a list of delightful titles, which includes some of the following. Ruiz Charges of Blast of Key Part 1, Ruiz Charges of Blast of Key Part 2, Ruiz Charges of Blast of Key Part 3, Ruiz Charges of Blast of Key Part 4, Ruiz Charges of Blast of Key Part 5, Ruiz Charges of Blast of Key Part 6, Ruiz Releases a Blast of Key. Finally, he missed and hit a bus filled with orphans. Oops. Anyone can use the chapter titles as prompts to write their own tales about the Cool War. Dread in Circuses is a canon about the GOI Herman Fuller's Circus of the Disquiet after a change in ownership. Herman Fuller, the P.T. Barnum equivalent of the anomalous world, has been replaced and the circus has become a place for anomalies to find solidarity and family. As long as you don't mind the clowns. The Man Who Wasn't There the Man Who Wasn't There tells the story of Nobody, a mysterious GOI of mysterious mystery. In this canon, Nobody isn't just one person, 
but multiple people. Every nobody has a purpose to fulfill, and they pass on the mantle once they fulfill it. For example, one iteration of nobody wants to find out who he is, because I guess he had an existential crisis or something. What a Wonderful World What a Wonderful World is a canon about Wonderworld, a magical city home to the Dr. Wondertain Company and a large population of anomalous people located somewhere in Boston, Massachusetts. It's a place full of childlike whimsy, sweets, and nothing dangerous at all, no sir. The Wondertainment Company would never do such a thing. The Gulf The Gulf is a canon about the Foundation in Florida and surrounding areas. Honestly, are you surprised with all the actually anomalous activity going on there? Florida man still remains uncontained. More broadly, the Gulf is about the Foundation's activity in the Gulf Coast region. In this specific region of the US, the employees of the Foundation are significantly freer, living off-site, and the Foundation also regularly collaborates with other GOIs, such as Marshall, Carter, and Dark. The canon explores the lives of these Foundation employees, as well as the employees of other GOIs, both when they're working and when they're not. Those Twisted Pines Those Twisted Pines is about the Foundation's presence in the American Pacific Northwest, a hotbed for anomalous activity, particularly around the Portlands. Foundation Site 64 was built to monitor this region, as well as the GOIs that operate around it, such as Wilson's Wildlife Solutions, Anderson Robotics, and the Unusual Incidents Unit. The employees of Site 64 are considerably freer than at other sites, and are allowed to live in the Portland metro area. Although, if I had to choose, well, let's just say that one is a place filled with unthinkable horrors and violence, and the other is the SCP Foundation. SNC Plastics tells the stories of the Foundation in Sloth's Pit, Wisconsin, which is a nexus of anomalous activity. The Foundation is present in the town under the front company, SNC Plastics. Much like Three Portlands, which is also a nexus, the residents of Sloth's Pit are aware of the anomalous. Sloth's Pit itself actually has the anomalous property of bending reality to conform to narratives and tropes, which the residents are also aware of. For example, if you say, what could possibly go wrong, reality will shift in order to make sure that something does go wrong. In Sloth's Pit, they're aware of this, and you can be fined up to $10,000 for saying it. On Guard 43 Site 43 is a waste disposal site. Fittingly, it's located in Canada. That's the third place I've insulted today. Man, I'm on a roll. Back on track. Site 43 gets rid of things like waste produced by SCP-173 or the victims of SCP-666 and a half J. But it also does other things, primarily contain anomalies. However, Site 43 has a significantly different methodology than other sites. Located in the Great Lakes region, where anomalous activity is high and putting everything into a box is impractical, Site 43 researchers have to come up with creative ways to keep anomalies outside of the public eye, and some anomalies are even allowed to roam freely. Furthermore, the site is more academically oriented than others, so researchers will often collaborate on long-term research projects there, and the atmosphere is much more laid back than the cold professionalism of the Foundation sites. There's a strong sense of camaraderie amongst the people who live there. Their goal now is fighting an ancient Austrian memeticist society called the Giftstreiber. God, I hope I pronounced that correctly. And an American memeticist corporation known as Vikander Need Technical Media. The Rue Macabre is a nexus located in New Orleans, which, uh, obligatory disparaging remark about New Orleans. Anyway, the Rue Macabre is a pocket dimension for the anomalous to go to when they've got nowhere else. Everyone in La Rue Macabre gets along as they lead slow lives in the swamp, enjoying events such as the bustling market square and the wondrous and odd shops. However, if you venture into the swamp, you're bound to find some dangerous oddities, like gator men riding 30-foot alligators, living trees, the shadow man, and homeless people in bath salts. Oh wait, those are actually just in regular New Orleans. The Antarctic Exchange SCP-1483, also known as the Third Empire, is a secret world hidden away in Antarctica, with their own human subspecies, culture, language, technology, and environment. This canon is about Foundation scientists going to the Third Empire to explore a wondrous, unfamiliar world, and also about Antarcticans coming to our worlds to discover corn dogs.
AIAD, or the Foundation's Artificial Intelligence Applications Division, follows the AIs that the Foundation has created in order to combat virtual threats as part of MTF Kappa 10, Skynet. This name is purely ironic, of course, and not foreshadowing anything. These AIs have personalities in order for them to be easier to work with. Into the Void is a canon about the Foundation's Beholder program, which is the Foundation's attempt to gather information about space using their Beholder line of satellites and an AI named Binary Star. It deals with space-based anomalies, which aren't necessarily dangerous, just worthy of curiosity as the Foundation gathers information about them. Project Heimdall Project Heimdall explores the preparations the Foundations take in case of alien invasion. No, no, it hasn't happened yet. But the Foundation has a plan for everything, and they'd be damned if they didn't have one for aliens. These aliens are presumed hostile and non-anomalous, so it's less cosmic horror and more war of the worlds. In my opinion though, given the sheer power of the Foundation, if the aliens are non anomalous, we wouldn't be trapped in here with them. They'd be trapped in here with us. On Mount Golgotha, SCP 012 is a music piece written in blood, and anyone that sees it is compelled to finish it with their own, driven to insanity as a result. On Mount Golgotha is a canon that expands on the people who study it, the mobile task force that deals with it, and the lore surrounding it with a prominent recurring theme of the power of music. My personal headcanon is that 012 is actually a Rickle. The Foundation Alchemy Department Alchemy, the science of understanding, deconstructing, and reconstructing matter. However, it is not an all-powerful art. It is impossible to create something out of nothing. If one wishes to obtain something, something of the equal value must be given. This is the law of equivalent exchange, the basis of all alchemy. In accordance to this law, there is a taboo among alchemists. Human transmutation is strictly forbidden for what could equal the value of a human soul! Oh shit, wrong show. <clears throat> anyway, the Foundation Alchemy Department has long been the laughing stock of the Foundation. Unlike its more practical cousin Thaumaturgy, its applications are significantly more restricted. Unbeknownst to most, this is actually a result of the Great Seal, a protocol enacted by the Foundation that severely limited the connection of alchemic forces to space-time on Earth and two years around it as a means of protecting the Earth. The Alchemy Department deals with situations only they can solve, as alchemy is actually an extremely powerful means of harnessing the elements around us, such as metal, gravity, water, earth, fire, air. Long ago, the four nations lived together in harmony. Then everything changed when the fire... The Anti-Memetics Division If memes are things that spread information, Anti-memes are things that prevent information from spreading. Real anti-memes exist, for example, long strings of random numbers that are difficult to remember. In the SCP universe, anti-memes such as SCP-055 can even make you forget what they are. The Anti-Memetics Division is a division of the Foundation that most people don't even know exists. Well, for obvious reasons. The members of this division take Nestics, which are drugs that help you remember, the opposite of Amnestics. The story follows Marion Wheeler, a member of the Division who fights against terrifying threats people can't even remember and it shows the... the... what was I talking about again? The Department of Miscommunications The Department of Miscommunications is the Foundation's department for anomalies that manipulate language. These are not anomalies that manipulate perception, nor anomalies that manipulate memory. They are anomalies that change language in such a way that makes it difficult to accurately describe them. The researchers in the department know what these anomalies are, it's just hard to tell you. As such, the people studying them need to find clever ways to convey the message they want to you. And when reading about the Department of Miscommunications, a bit of brain power is required on your part. So, uh, don't read if you're a small brain like me and just wait for someone to explain it to you. Temporal Site 01 RCT Delta T Temporal Site 01 RCT Delta T is home to the Foundation's Temporal Anomalies Department, which deals with anomalies that, surprise, surprise, affect time. It's run by Thaddeus Zynak, a Foundation employee from the 25th century, who was thrown back to the 20th century by a temporal anomaly. The department knows that the SCP Foundation exists in a world where timelines are constantly shifting, with certain events that affect the time stream greatly by causing timelines to merge, and the department takes advantage of that. The department also works to develop time-based technologies for the Foundation's use. 
the decommissioning department. In the old days of the SED Foundation wiki, quality control was not so strict. Inevitably, this meant that, well, a lot of shitty self-insert articles were posted. As a result, the people of the SCP wiki started decommissioning SCPs, which were stories written in order to explain the deletion of bad articles, and as a means of shaming bad writing. These typically involves characters like Clef or Kondraki, killing off the self-insert demon darts of OC, please do not steal. The wiki nowadays has discontinued the process, simply deleting bad articles, but the concept has been revived by the decommissioning department. In universe, the decommissioning department is a cannon that kills anomalies when containment and diplomacy have failed. This cannon treats the old decommissioning articles, such as Duke Till Dawn, a tale where Kondraki kills an edgy teenage vampire, as canonical, but emphasizes the fact that they were unprofessional, and the newly formed decommissioning department run by the ethics company is far more orderly, and only performed when the circumstances require it. Resurrection In the old days, the Foundation didn't really have a central storyline. The closest the Foundation got to it was MTF Omega-7, Pandora's Box, and the misadventures of Clef and Kondraki in decommissioning edgy OCs. This canon seeks to resurrect that, see what I did there, and act as the official storyline of the wiki, but with a more updated style of storytelling of the modern wiki. It follows the Foundation as it puts together MTF Alpha Nog, Last Hope, which is basically the Avengers of the Foundation, an MTF made of anomalies. It also explores how they interact with the internal politics of the Foundation that is rapidly changing, which is in itself symbolic of how the SCP wiki itself has changed over the years. Third Law Third Law is a canon that isn't centered around specific people or places, but rather central themes. Third Law can be described as science fiction stories in SCP Foundation's urban fantasy site, where the veil, the veil is whether the non-anomalous world is aware of the anomalous, is present but weakening. Anomalous communities are present, and paratech is common behind the veil. It's about how humanity uses logic and science to decipher the anomalous in the fields of parasites, the history and geopolitics of the anomalous world, and the fact that the human spirit can advance past the unknown. Site 17 Deepwell Catalog The Site 17 Deepwell Catalog canon is an anthology series centered around the tenet that the Foundation is, at its core, evil. Not because of SCP-1471 Rule 34, but because it is an inhumane bureaucracy that enforces ignorance as law. These loosely connected stories serve to try and illustrate the concept that the Foundation is broken on a fundamental level. The Coldest War The Coldest War, not to be confused with the Cool War, is a canon about the Cold War. It's a story of subterfuge and geopolitics on the global scale, and the conflict between Russia and America that drives it all. The two nations have learned to wield the parascientific, and aim to get the upper hand with it. Meanwhile, the Foundation wants to get the fuck out of Dodge. They don't care much for politics. Unusual Cargo Unusual Cargo is about the commission on Unusual Cargo, which was a group of interests that existed between the 17th and 19th centuries, before the formation of the Foundation. The commission on Unusual Cargo was bankrolled by the English East India Company, until the company asked the commission to use anomalies to defeat the company's enemies, to which they refused and fled. Check it out if you want to read a canon about SCPs before the Foundation, politics, pirates, and actual canon. The Old Man in the Sea SCP-169 is a marine arthropod of massive size, estimated between 2,000 to 8,000 kilometers, or roughly the size of your mob, known as the Leviathan. In this canon, it focuses on SCP-169 species, which are spacefaring biological arcs that carry creatures inside them to settle other planets. Only Game in Town Only Game in Town is a canon about Rudy, an entity that represents the concept of the fear of the unknown. In books, it is represented by the mysterious monsters and foreign enemies, and it can only act out the roles it was given. With the advent of modern science and thought, it has grown weaker. But as of late, due to the time it has spent in the Wanderer's Library, it has gained just a little bit more agency. Stealing Solidarity Stealing Solidarity is self-described as, imagine if the Guardians of the Galaxy were an anime that aired on Toonami during the late 90s. Specifically, it's about SCP-2085, which are five cyborg cat girls 
and a man named Wizard. From space! They travel around on a spaceship called the Solidarity and go on adventures around the universe. Pitch Haven. Pitch Haven follows Foundation staff Dr. Stuart Hayward and Agent Sarah Crowley. Foundation personnel that died and were revived as SCP-2792 and SCP-2999-B respectively. They work together at Site-45, which is in Las Vegas, to capture and research the anomalous objects around there. However, they start to realize that demons are after them for some unknown reason, and the two of them start discovering who they really are. The Donk Man's Den This canon is ass. No, literally, it's about a humanoid donkey named the Donk Man, who can change perception, which means he can change what people see. Donk Man hangs around the southern US and Mexico, and has been around since the 1800s. He's sort of like a folk hero around these parts, in the same vein as Pecos Bill with Paul Bunyan. So, that was all of the canons that follow the mainline narrative. Let's move on to the ones that do not attempt to coexist with the mainline narrative, whether they be in alternate universes or divergent timelines. Broken Masquerade One of the core values of the SCP Foundation is that it keeps its existence a secret, so that the rest of us can sleep at night. However, what if something happened where it could no longer do so? The Broken Masquerade canon occurs after the Foundation fails to prevent the temporal displacement of the entirety of North Korea, and is forced to reveal themselves to the world. It explores how the Foundation and the anomalous world deals with being known by the world at large, how the general public interacts with a previously hidden world, and how the Foundation is going to run a Twitter account. In Memoria Aditum In Memoria Aditum is a canon dedicated to exploring the past, present, and future of everyone's favorite body horror enthusiasts, the Sarkics. This canon explores the history of ancient Sarkic kingdoms and how the modern Foundation interacts with them. However, it seems that the Sarkics, long thought defeated thoroughly, are amassing power, while the Foundation stays ignorant to their imminent revenge. Eventually, the Foundation must break the veil in order to fight them, but they might just be too late. Competitive Eschatology we all know the SCP Foundation prevents the end of the world every so often. No big deal. But there are a few world-ending beings that are slightly more difficult to contain. And well, that's fine. The Foundation will figure it out eventually. Oh god, they're all coming at once! Competitive eschatology is a canon that asks, what if all the world enders woke up at the same time and decided they wanted to fuck Earth at the same time? Like a big cosmic gangbang. Some of them will work together, some of them will fight each other, and everyone at the Foundation is in for a shit type of work suit. The Trash Fire The Trash Fire is a canon about the lasting influence of ancient gods, specifically the Scarlet King and others, and the war waged by the people who worship them on their former slaves, a divergent human species called the Imit. The Davite civilization has long since crumbled, and yet the war has not ended. Various factions over history have continued the war in their stead, until the Foundation came in and messed it up for everyone. In this canon, the Foundation is far from omniscient, and must be smart about their resources. Codename Green King Codename Green King is a canon about a powerful reality vendor named Josephine, who is in hiding from the Foundation. Josephine has managed to remain hidden by manipulating the Foundation, like puppets, and the Foundation has caught on. They spend decades chasing her, almost succeeding in some cases, and continually developing new technology to catch her, but Josephine continues to evade them. Those Who Lived On Those Who Lived On is a canon about SCP-682 and SCP-053, the big angry lizard and the little girl. In this canon, anomalies are leftover residents of a more magical world that was destroyed. This follows the adventures of the two as they meet other anomalies from the previous universe and 682 acts like a mentor and father, 053 as they travel the world. Also, 173 is actually Hitler in this canon. War on All Fronts War on All Fronts is a canon about kaijus, specifically when a magical giant croco squid attacks and kills most of the inhabitants of High Brazil, a nexus off the coast of Ireland. It's divided into three subcanons, Academics, Anastasis, and Apocalypse. Academics is set in the timeline after the initial attack, and explores how the anomalous world studies it, mourns the tragedy, and how life continues on. It can also be considered canon to the other two. 
Apocalypse is set in a timeline in which the Foundation studies the Croco squid, finagles some shit, and loves now they're like a million of them pulling into our dimension. Anastasis is set in a timeline where it wasn't the Foundation, for once, but Prometheus Labs that revives the kaiju. So the Foundation decides to build a giant motherfucking robot in response. Woo! This makes Anastasis objectively the best timeline. End of death. Immortality sounds great, but only if you don't think about it. In this canon, all living things suddenly stop dying. However, this does not come with healing abilities, so those who have been dismembered are forced into a constant state of agony. Some have I have no mouth and I must scream type shit going on. Overpopulation is becoming a concern, and insects are overrunning the world. The End of Death explores how the Foundation and the world interact with a reality with no final end. Lowell Foundation In the Before Times, also known as the early 2010s, the Foundation was written very differently. Rather than the cold professional organization it was presented as, the inner workings of the Foundation were written to be some sort of supernatural sitcom of sorts. Now while that was all fun and good while it lasted, the wiki has since moved on. However, sometimes you miss the rampant goofiness of the old days, and here is the result. Lowell Foundation is an anthology of stories similar to the early staff to the Foundation. And the in-universe justification of this is that the main characters of these stories, typically Bright, Clef, and Kondraki, or other senior staff member avatars, have been given reality-altering powers whilst having severe brain damage via anomalous means, resulting in stories such as Dr. Bright is no longer allowed to use temporal anomalies in order to travel back in time so he can kill Hitler. The CAC Hub The CAC Hub self-describes as not a canon, but simply a hub to host crack fiction too stupid for lol foundation. This is saying a lot. Unfortunately, they're right. There's no continuity, just loose rules. These quotation marks are very heavy. The titular character of this hub is Dr. Spanko, or SCP-2337, a corn crake that speaks unintelligibly and calls gummy worms strangle fruits, and uses the catchphrase CAC. But for some reason, dangerous SCPs such as SCP-076 seem to revere him as an authority figure. Ship in a Bottle Ship in a Bottle is a canon about... What the fuck? Let me read this again. Ship in a Bottle is a canon about... Dr. Kondraki. And that time when he got an Aquafina brand water bottle stuck on his dick. What the fuck? Ad Astra per Aspera. A rising number of K-class events makes the Foundation decide that the best course of action for humanity is to take to the stars. They drop the veil and evacuate humanity off-planet, spreading their influence around the solar system with assistance from the anomalous. Essentially, this canon is a space opera set in the not-so-far future. First contact is made with aliens, new technologies are being discovered, Corporations are scrambling to expand their influence, political figure scheme, and planets are being colonized. Also, unrelated, but ad astra per aspera means to the stars through difficulties, which also happens to be the state motto for K Kansas? Straight on till morning. SCP-2047 is an alien device that switches positions of planets. And a race of solar system popping aliens used it to switch the position of their planet with ours. In fact, our current solar system is not actually our original one. We used to live in another one, and in our original solar system we had moon colonies, but the moon was not transported with the Earth when we switched solar systems. Because of the loss of the lunar colonies, there was a significant global upheaval, so the aliens were really sorry and they helped the Foundation amnesticize everyone, and now we have our current solar system. Straight on till morning is a canon that happens in a timeline, where instead of Earth being swapped around with an alien planet like it was outlined in SCP-2047, it was swapped with a cold dead planet, leaving the inhabitants of the moon alone in the universe. However, humanity isn't one to give up, and the governments of the moon, including the Foundation, GOC, and several world governments, cobble together what little is left in order to go home. Their current heading, second star on the left, and straight on till morning. Doctors of the Church It was said that in ancient times, as it is today, there were a great many of expunged that walked the world, that knew not the laws of man nor God and caused great ruination and confusion wherever they roamed. To protect all men, the ancient temple was founded, 
to secure, contain, and protect those terrors that threaten the safety of all. But no secret can be kept forever, and in time, many others learned that the expunged existed, and created their own heathen temples, seeking to make and take such things for themselves. And from this conflict arose the Great Breach, and when the masses of the expunged found themselves loosed at once upon the world, and when the flames had passed those priests of the ancient temple, who yet lived, saw a world that would never again be as it had been before. And they said to themselves, What shall we do now? How can we few ever undo such a great calamity? And they saw the Lord Bright approach them, and with a great commotion arose through the crowd, for they thought him dead. And the Lord spoke with a great voice, and he said, Shut the fuck up for ten seconds, and I'll tell you. Everett 1-1-2-1-9 one, one, Basically, the doctors of the church is set after a great apocalypse, in a time where the people have reverted to a medieval level culturally. However, what remains of the world must still be projected, so the SCP Foundation has been converted to a church with a religion similar to Christianity, except the holy texts are the special containment procedures, holy objects are SCPs, and Jesus is... Dr. Bright. He really doesn't want to be there. The Bellerverse the Bellerverse is similar to Doctors of the Church, but with a much more serious tone. In a world where all of human life except the members of one Foundation site is wiped out, which include, but are not limited to, Bright, Clef, Kondraki, Wrights, Light, Gears, Yorick, and Strelnikov, and they try to rebuild. However, the challenge proves too much, and the world regresses back into scattered city-states and tribes, which end up worshipping the long-gone members of the Foundation in a religion similar in structure to the Greek pantheon. Thousands of years pass, and while rogue SCP objects still roam about, there's still hope of rebuilding, despite this unexplored new world. Daybreak Daybreak is, as its name suggests, a canon set in the scenario put forth by SCP-001, SD Locke's proposal, when day breaks. In this 001 proposal, the sun got really mad and turned the world into a yucky fucky wucky by melting people into bolognese. About 6 billion people are turned into flesh piles in a constant state of agony, which is enough to make any circuit cream their pants, and any exposure to sunlight or moonlight will turn you just like them. However, the Foundation was never one to give up, and this canyon explores how they navigate this new world, and adapt to it. In a world after an apocalypse, man, is there a bargain sale going on for those? That killed everything human, there was surprisingly still sentient life left. Anomalous humans were somehow not considered fully human, and thus managed to survive. There are also robots, sentient creatures, and anything that came to Earth after the apocalypse, like aliens, time travelers, rogue SCP objects, and humans that died during the apocalypse but were revived afterwards, somehow. In this world, magic is common and humans rare. How will life go on in this unhuman world? Rat's Nest If you ask anyone when the paranormal first appeared, most would say that it's always been around, but surely ancient people did not have the means of containing world-ending monsters with their medieval technology. Has the Foundation always been around? The answer is no. In this canon, the Anomalous started appearing in greater numbers and in greater strength after the 19th century, because the GOC killed God. LTE-0913 Ex Machina was a glowing orb that was a keystone of our reality, and following its destruction, more and more anomalies have appeared and our reality is starting to fall apart at the seams. The Foundation was founded after these events, and is actually run by an O5 council, made of anomalies that do not want to destroy anomalies. This canon follows the steady degradation of humanity over thousands of years, as the world as we know it changes into a chaotic, anomalous place, a rat's nest. Apotheosis Apotheosis is a canon in which an ancient power slowly turns the human population into X-Men. In other words, Everyone gets superpowers. You get superpowers. You get superpowers. The Foundation doesn't like this very much, and they decide to try and maintain normalcy while slowly crumbling. What kind of political upheaval does this rapid shift in power cause? What kind of life do the transformed people lead? Find out next time on Apotheosis. Aces and Eights. Say, partner, I don't think I've seen you around these parts. Seems like you don't know much about the Aces and Eights kit. Well, that's to be expected, and... <laughs> this voice is really hard on my throat. If you couldn't tell by my piss-poor attempt at an impression back there, 
this is an AIDS Saturday world where everyone from the SCP universe is actually in the Wild West after the Civil War ends. Characters, SCP objects, and so forth, even organizations. For example, the Unusual Incidents Unit is a Union Investigation Unit. However, there is no equivalent of the Foundation in this universe. Foundation characters like Dr. Sumerian still exist, and SCP objects like 682 and 173 have their counterparts. But the Foundation itself does not exist. Unfounded Unfounded is a canon that asks, what if the Foundation never existed? All the members of the Foundation still exist, and all the objects it contains still exist, and all of the GOIs it interacts with still exist, but not the Foundation. What happens? Well, the world hasn't fallen apart, but there are a few differences. The GOC is the primary anomalous agency now. A few SCP objects are now out in the wild and uncontained, or owned by a different GOI, and the world's governments must take a more proactive role in dealing with the anomalous. Yggdrasil's Surveyor Yggdrasil's Surveyor is a canon about SCP-507, also known as Tommy, Steve, Bruno, Guy, Houdini, and Grabnock the Destroyer. SCP-507 is an anomalous human who, every few weeks or so, involuntarily shifts into an alternate dimension. In a world where he was not found by the Foundation, but rather the Serpent's Hand, SCP-507 is tasked with gathering information about these alternate universes. As in this world, the Wanderer's Library's ways, portals that lead to alternate dimensions, have been irreparably damaged. He visits and interacts with worlds, such as the Broken Masquerade Canon, the world of SCP-5000, Shameless plug time, go check out my video on it, and other canons that I've mentioned in the video. And that's all for today. Subscribe to support my channel and tell me if there's anything I missed. Next time, I'll cover all SCP-001 proposals. See ya! Thank you.